Did you know that toilets and web design actually have a lot in common? Stick around to find out. Man, this video better not stink. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome to Creative X. My name is Brad Hussey, I'm a web designer. Now before we jump into today's video, help us become the number one web design and editor X channel on the YouTubes and the whole internet by simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for your support, really appreciate it. Now, when you're designing a website, an app or an interface, the first step is to make a plan. I know that sounds boring, but it's important. That's why we wireframe, boxes and lines, it's not that hard. Think about what the website or app will do. And then the user experience, think about how it's gonna look. And once you've made that plan and you've established that roadmap and the user experience, it's time to design. Now I'm no home builder and nor have I ever built a home, but I like to use the home building metaphor to draw comparisons between homes and websites. The building process is kind of the same. You draw up the blueprints and frame up the house and then doing things like plumbing and putting in toilets and electrical so you could flick on the light switch. Some people try to code a website or app without first designing it, but this is actually a mistake. Not always, but it's usually much easier to code up a website or build the app when you have a plan and a design to work from. Many web design tools are available to us as designers today. Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, but for years, web designers used Adobe Photoshop. But is Photoshop the right choice for web design? Well, it's not even meant for web design. It was never intended to be. The way I see it is this. You have to use the right tool for the job and using Photoshop for web design is kind of like using a butter knife to chop wood when you could use a power saw. It'll do a much better job, it'll be quicker and it will probably be safer. So why is Photoshop not the right tool for the, for the job, for web design? Photoshop is a tool for photographers and graphic designers. Photoshop's been around since the 1990s and was developed by Thomas and John Knoll as a bitmap graphics editor. So designing for the web in the 90s and the early 2000s was very different than designing for the web today. Websites were designed as literal bitmap graphics in Photoshop. They were sliced and diced, and then they were coded in tables in HTML with maybe CSS to create essentially an interactive clickable, well, graphic. Today, the web is less pixel-based and more vector-based, and today's web users come to expect a certain quality and design standard for their experience. You probably won't be taken seriously as a designer when your websites and user interfaces are blurry, pixelated, look bad, and don't meet the user expectations. Although if current design trends like brutalism and retro design styles keep happening, maybe we'll have super lo-fi pixelated designs again. Hit the thumbs up if you think that'll happen. Now, a photograph is a bitmap graphic. When you zoom in on any digital image, you'll start to see that it's comprised of pixels. Now, text and line drawings and shapes, user interfaces and logos should be vector graphics. Vector graphics look smooth and can infinitely resize without losing any quality, which makes for a much sharper visually appealing experience. All of which Photoshop can do, but that's not its intended purpose. But with Figma, that's what it's designed for. Now finally, Photoshop is a paid software. You're paying for a tool that's not meant for the job. Figma is free and meant for the job. Uh, it just makes sense. And now Figma enables designers to create interactive prototypes. The interface is super easy to use and it makes it really, it makes it a really ideal experience for beginners who are just starting out. It's also a seamless transition from Figma to Editor X. The, US, the user interface and the experience is very similar. Now Figma also has a lot of features that Photoshop just doesn't have, like real-time collaboration, syncing across devices, unlimited layers per artboard, vector shapes, text editing tools, libraries of UI elements, a really cool collaborative community, and the list goes on. All of this comes at no cost. So why wouldn't you want to dig into Figma? All right, so let's say I've convinced you, you wanna give Figma a try, you realize let's, let's do it. But learning a new software is hard, I get it. It's why it took me so long to switch to Figma from Photoshop, it's just the learning curve is real. Here's what I recommend. Use the 80-20 rule when learning any new software. Essentially means that 80% of your results come from 20% of the efforts. Or 20% of the tool's functionality will get you pretty much most of the way. Basically, a little goes a long way. You don't need to master it to squeeze the juice out of it. There's only a few techniques you really need to get the job done, all right? So now what happens when you don't know how to achieve an outcome or design with the tool, like 
what if you come across a roadblock and you realize, I don't know how to do that? Well, you gotta use something called JIT, Just In Time Learning, or JIT. JIT is a technique for learning that you can apply to anything, really, that encourages the learner to focus on the task at hand. Just focus on what you need to do now to get past that specific roadblock. You're not overwhelmed with information, you don't waste time reviewing materials that you don't need right away or ever. This technique helps you stay focused and prevents you from feeling overwhelmed. That's what I do. I just make a big mess in Figma, doing all the wrong things because I'm not trying to get a job at Figma or be the Figma expert. I'm just using the tool to achieve an outcome, regardless of my workflow or if I'm using best practices, which will improve over time. All right, next step. Let's say you move to Figma and you're new at design and you still don't feel your designs are very good. How do you improve your designs? Well, what I recommend is just copying people. A common hesitation new designers have is that they're not really that good at design. Maybe you think your designs look terrible or you don't know how to come up with a good idea or the end result just never looks like what you imagined in your head. Design is not art. Good art is subjective and expressive, meant to evoke emotion and feelings and stuff. Usually artists have talent. On the other hand, good design is just a set of systems and rules and principles that create order and meaning and organization out of unorganized information. Good designers have a skill that they've practiced and honed over time. And of course, a designer can also be an artist and use both their talent and their skill to, in combination to create a world-class design and experience. But take comfort in knowing that you don't need to be blessed with talent to be a good designer. Every new designer sucks for a while. It just takes a bit of practice. And the best way to practice your design is just copy other good designers. The whole point is to be inspired by someone else's work so that you can learn and replicate their style and then make it your own. Copying will help you improve your skills with the various tools, letting you see what works and what doesn't work when creating your sites or logos or whatever you're designing at the time. You can also find really good design inspiration in places like Shaping Design by Editor X, Awards, Site Inspire, Follow other good designers on Instagram, look at the top companies' websites, and then try to replicate that design. Do this enough times, and you'll notice patterns in great design, and eventually you'll develop your unique style. Designing websites can be a daunting task and make you feel like flushing your work down the toilet, but you can get up to speed quickly with the right tools and a little bit of practice and some helpful tips. All right, so now that I've probably convinced you, hopefully convinced you, that Figma is probably the tool you should use for designing your websites, you're obviously gonna to need to ultimately convert that design into a real working website. And you can do that automatically with just a literal click of, the, click of a button with a plugin called Figma to Editor X. So watch this video to see that in action. It's pretty cool. Catch you in the next one.